Hey guys, how are you? Andy Suku Finance here, white to get Credit Solutions. Today, I want to speak to you guys about credit card fees and how to avoid them. A lot of you have these fees, um, and a lot of you don't even read these statements. And also, a lot of you don't even know that you're paying these fees because you never read the contract when you got it. Luckily, I've read all the fine prints for you guys, just like I've read everything else that I speak about on our uh, videos, the YouTube channel. I read the fine prints and um, we're going to talk about it today because I have a few clients that had some questions about credit card fees, how to avoid them, and um, we're going to talk about that. So I decided to do a breakdown of every single fee that's involved in a credit card that you have in your wallet. Now, all of these fees can be, you can find them on your credit card's website. Also, when you apply for the credit card, it's listed in the little fine tiny prints that no one wants to read but I read them, they're listed there. And also when you get the credit card on the back of the paper that the card's attached to, the card's attached to it, those fees are listed there. So we're gonna talk about what the fees are, how to avoid them, and if you wanna apply for a credit card, what's the best site to use to apply for a credit card that fits your credit portfolio, okay? So let's get into this. Credit cards, obviously we know they offer a very safe, method of spending, right? You swipe, pay, when you get the card, when you get the bill at the end of the month, you're on your statement date, it cuts off, you have a due date, you pay your card, you keep using the card, you pay them on time, you don't go over the limit. After six months, the bank will automatically raise your credit limit depending on the kind of credit card you have. And when I speak about the kind of credit card, I'm talking about prime credit card. For this video, we're not gonna talk about subprime credit cards. I don't Partaking, I don't advocate for subprime credit card. I never want any of my clients to have a subprime credit card in their wallet or their purse. So we're talking about prime credit cards, right? Um, you know, we all know that <clears throat> it's a convenient way of spending, right? Now, the first thing we'll talk about is annual fees. A lot of cards like the Chase Sapphire, American Express, uh, the Silver, the, the uh, Gold, whatever those two cards, the charge cards, they come with an annual fee. Um, fees anywhere from $50 to $500 yearly. Some of those cards, I believe Chase Sapphire, if I'm not mistaken, and I think they still do it, you pay that fee up front. Even if you don't use the card, you're gonna be paying that fee yearly. Now, the way around that is one, either you don't use the card and you don't apply for it and you don't get it, right? You don't take that card because you don't wanna pay the fee. Or if you have one of those cards, the trick around it is that every year when the fee is up, Tell, if you're not using a card, call the bank. Tell them, hey, I'm not using a card. I'm thinking about canceling the card. They will waive that fee once or twice for you, um, but mo no more than that. You can tell them you're not using it. It's not a benefit to you, um, especially if you haven't used it for 90 days. All right? So you can go around it that way, or you just don't get the card, apply for the card, and keep it in your wallet because you don't want to pay for that fee. All right? Authorized fee. Now, a lot of gurus are telling you to add authorized users to your credit cards. Yes, and it works if you know, you're know adding it for your kid, uh, to build a credit, maybe a significant other to build a credit. But now, certain banks are charging a fee for having an authorized user. So if you had a primary card and <clears throat> you're adding an authorized user, they're gonna be charging you a fee monthly while that authorized user is active. To avoid that, only add an authorized user if it's a child or a family member that you're close to that you're looking to help them build their credit, or you wanna give them a credit card to use and they're gonna pay their bill, they're gonna be responsible for their transactions. But a lot of banks are charging that fee now. Balance transfer. When you do a balance transfer, there is a fee that's associated with that. Now, if you're gonna apply for a credit card, if you wanna do a balance transfer, I should say, let me back up. If you wanna do a balance transfer, look for a credit card that has an uh, initial no balance transfer fee to do the balance transfer. If not, if you're balance transferring from one credit card to another credit card you have already, that comes with a fee. So make sure that it's worthwhile. The fees are very min minuscule sometimes, but it does add up. Okay, but just so you know, there is a fee behind that as well. Every bank charges that, by the way. Cash advance fee. You want to go to the bank. You want to take some money off of your credit card. The cash advance fee is anywhere from 3 to 6%. And then there's an interest rate on that, uh, annual APR rate on that as well. I have a video that we did on that about two weeks ago. 
but there is a fee for that as well and the fee is actually very heavy so think twice before you do cash advance if you don't need it and also in that video when you do a cash advance you own you set a certain limit usually i think it's 15 percent of your credit card limit you can take off you cannot take the whole credit limit off the credit card no bank allows that before your transaction fees if you're traveling out of the u.s you know using your credit card there is a fee for that there's one of two things you can do either look for a credit card and i'll give you the website at the end of this video where you want to look for a credit card that has no foreign introductory uh foreign transaction fee or call your bank to find out what the fee is and if it's a very high fee most of them per transaction is high try to use one of your credit cards that don't have a fee or also ask the bank if they can waive it for you as a one-time courtesy okay late payment that goes just by saying late payment if you're late $35 late fee all bank charges at prime and subprime return payment fee if you make a payment I mean some people still write a checks that's okay but we have ACA system now where you can automatic payment make a payment to your checking account but if you are late the return fee is $25 to $29 on any credit card if you make a payment the payment was returned due to insufficient fund MSF over the limit fee yes that's a very big one because all of my clients are maxed out on their credit card that's because they have small credit cards or they have entry-level credit cards with entry-level limits you make one transaction it's already touching the credit limit you are being charged a fee every month on top of your interest your payments over limit fee you're being charged as well for that okay so keep those balances on your credit limit ideally keep it out of 30 percent to keep that score high shipping fee let's say you lose your card and the prime banks are charging if you want your card overnight there's a fee assessed for that sometimes you can ask them to waive it as a one time if you lose your card more than once they won't they wouldn't waive it more than once they'll charge you this next time but there is a shipping fee to get the card overnight if not wait 7 to 14 days 7 to 14 business days to get that card in the mail billing fees most banks are offering online statements that means paperless you're not going to get a bill but if you're the kind of person that wants a statement in the mail sent to you every month there is a fee for that so go to online pay online banking create an account have your statement online who wants paper anyway who wants mail i have no mail come to my house i don't want to see no mail oh frustrating anyway there's a fee for that um what's what was this oh car designs so chase sapphire discover American Express almost every single prime bank offers a card with a special design if you want to put your dog on your I remember Citibank had this if you want to put your dog on the card your dog picture you want to put your face you want to put your spouse whatever it is you want to design your card with the banks do offer that service of course it comes with a fee to be honest I will stick with a traditional credit card that the bank offers because say now you lose the card now someone knows what your pet looks like or your significant other looks like yeah much personal keep it simple no fees for that if you stick with the simple card now I told you guys I'm gonna give you the site if you want to know what's the best credit card based off of your credit profile that means you have to know your credit score how do you know your credit score get an account with score navigator scorenavigator.com put in the promo code y2k credit 10 get an account there so you can monitor your credit monthly so you can monitor your budgeting your spending your credit score all of that stuff and much more on there if you haven't gotten that account, you're missing out. You're doing yourself a great disservice. Anyway, bankrate.com is the site you want to use as a very reliable source. Nerd wallet as well, but I find bankrate.com to be very precise with what is the market industry for credit card, what's out on the market, what offers are out there. Um, bankrate.com is a to-go site when you want to find out what's the best credit card. As long as you know your credit score, you can look on their website, their credit card, and you see all of their... Uh, requirements qualifications and what comes with the card all right so I hope this information was helpful because I know you guys don't read the contract when you get them but I did for you guys so if you have any questions about this topic or any other topic at that drop a comment below and I'll try to get back to you guys talk to you soon see you on the next video